morning, and welcome to everybody to the Bethel Methodist Church of North Texas. Thank you for joining us again this April 26th of 2020, and I pray just like hopefully all of you who are watching and want to be a part of a worship service at our church or whatever church God may be leading you to at this time, I hope uh, that you are too seeing the hopefully a light at the end of the tunnel in the near future as we await uh, more direction from our leaders and as we seek God's discernment on when we can all get together here locally, I know uh, we are certainly going to be praying about those things, and I would ask you to, to pray with us as to when we can get together. But hopefully we've been hearing some rumblings about uh, reopening the economy and having those discussions and things of that nature, so we hope that's uh, going to happen safely in the right time. So let's continue to pray for those things. Deuteronomy Chapter 2, beginning with verse 7. Deuteronomy 2, verse 7. One verse of Scripture this morning. I'm also going to be sharing some other Scriptures from the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers. Deuteronomy 2, 7 says this, For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth by walking through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And I could probably say or, or tell you, probably count on one hand how many times God has led me to preach from one verse of Scripture, an entire message. And I know many, many pastors have probably done that, uh, but it's something very unique to me. But sometimes I believe God speaks so powerfully and so clearly through just a few words um, that He tells us basically everything that we need to know. And He has a lot to say, as we know, throughout throughout His Word. But starting from the end of the verse, I want to look at Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7, and the end here, as God is speaking to His people Israel. He says these very powerful words, Thou hast lacked nothing. And I believe that phrase, Thou hast lacked nothing, it's a pretty self-explanatory phrase, meaning that when someone says you are lacking nothing, they're simply saying you have everything that you need. You have everything that you need. You have the resources, you have the means to do everything that you need to do. When you're charged with a task in school, for example, and the teacher is telling you, listen, I've told you what to do, I've given you the instruction, I've gone on the board and I've put all the examples up for you, I've given you the task and I've told you when it needs to be turned in, you're not lacking anything, so now it's up to you to do it. If you're doing a home building project, which... As my poor wife knows, I haven't taken on a whole lot of those. You're collecting all your tools. You're taking all your materials. You're watching your YouTube videos or how-to, reading your how-to manuals, whatever the case may be. You have everything, to, everything that you need to complete your project. You're not lacking anything, are you? And I hope this makes some sense to you. But what about this example? If you are alive, if you are breathing, if you are conscious, if you're trying to find meaning and purpose, trying to do the best you can in this world, living through an economic crisis or maybe low human morale, maybe some self-doubt, and then someone comes along and says to you, you are lacking nothing, how would you receive that? What would you say? How would it make you feel? How would you respond and I believe it probably, a lot of it depends on who said it, how you receive that information. But I want you to notice in our text, God has spoken these exact words to His people. Thou hast lacked nothing. And if we're truly going to understand God telling His people Israel what He means and why He said these words at the time in which He said them, there's one other thing that is glaring and obvious to me that hopefully all of you can't overlook either, just like I couldn't. And that is the fact that God knows everything that has transpired with His people Israel. The Bible says that God knows the end before the beginning. There is not nothing that is unknown to God. There is not anything He is ignorant of, something that He didn't see, or something maybe... He was misinformed about something or lacking in knowledge. That is not God. And it's important that God's people and all of us really know that. God sees everything. He knows everything. And that's so important. 
Because with regards to Israel, he knows everything about them intimately. He knows their history. He knows where they come from. He knows the choices that they made. He knows the consequences of those choices and how they've affected their lives as individuals and as a nation. God knows it all. And listen to that portion of Scripture that communicates that. It said, He knoweth by walking through this great wilderness these forty years. God knows they're walking through the wilderness these forty years. And if we try to understand what God means here specifically about His people going through this wilderness, there's plenty that God has given us about that. When God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, led by God's man Moses, they wandered in the wilderness. Listen, did you hear it? Forty years. Forty years. Can you imagine forty years? In this time frame, they were warring against foreign nations. They were dealing with their own internal problems they were creating amongst themselves. They were not listening to God's counsel, just to name a few. Why did this happen? Why were God's own people wandering in the wilderness for 40 years? That's such a great question. But that's not the question I want to ask you. I want to ask you this question. Did God forget what He had promised them? God's people wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, a great wilderness, the Bible says, for 40 years. Did God forget what He promised them? Let me remind you in Exodus 6, 8, the Lord said, I will bring you unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an heritage. I am the Lord. God speaking to His people. Then He said this in Numbers 14, 7, something similar. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we have passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then He will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. That was God's promise to the children of Israel. And finally, just to really hammer the point from God, Deuteronomy 6.10 says, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, houses full of good things, wells digged, vineyards and olive trees, where ye shall eat and be full. Did God forget his promise to his people of the promised land? What a great and wonderful promise and place. Why the wilderness? Why the wilderness? This beautiful place, the land of Canaan, that God promised to His people is not the subject of our text because God is speaking of a wilderness. They haven't made it to Canaan yet. They're wanting to be there, but in our text they are in the wilderness. So listen. God has certainly shown us the beauty of the promised land, as I've shared with you throughout the Scriptures, but He's also shown us the reality of the wilderness. He saw it all. All the trials, all the struggles, all the reality of Israel's life for 40 years of struggle. He saw it all. And that's so important to know that He saw it from a technical, biblical, historical account of the Jews in the wilderness. We can read so much more about it in the Scriptures. God's people and why they were there for so long. Forty years. What does the wilderness mean to you? What does the wilderness mean to me? Have you ever been in the wilderness? A standard dictionary definition of wilderness means this, an uncultivated, uninhabited, and inhospitable region. A neglected or abandoned region of a garden or town or a position of disfavor. That's that's interesting thought. The original Hebrew gives it a little more meaning, I believe. The original word is midbar. 
It means a pasture, open field where cattle are driven, and by implication, a desert. Has anyone ever felt like they've been in the desert? Or been in a barren land? Or been in a, an abandoned or neglected region or town? It's a symbol sometimes of life. A wilderness is a place that is undesirable, a place that is hard to live in or difficult to survive in. Hardship, discomfort, a place where you fight for your life every single day seems to be the, more, seems to be the norm. And this is the picture of a wilderness symbolically. This is what God's people were going through, not only literally, not being a part of Canaan in the promised land, but also because of the hardships that they were facing. Did God know about it? Did He understand it? Did He see it? Symbolically speaking, have you ever been in the wilderness? And does God know when you're there? Does God know when you're there? These thoughts really spoke to me this week. And I believe all, to some degree, have seen the wilderness. We've all felt the emotion and the pull of sin and temptation in this life, have we not? Have we not all felt the pull and the draw and temptation of Satan and sin in this life that has caused us to believe or to think that we are going through a wilderness period or wilderness time or a wilderness place, symbolically? Speaking and emotionally speaking, that feeling of being somewhere you don't want to be, living a life that is difficult to live, and feeling like you can barely survive and get up out of bed. Have you ever felt that way? Where every day is uncomfortable, and you are begging God to please help you get to Canaan, to the promised land. Have you ever been there? And if you have, please listen to God's message in this one verse of Scripture. It said this, He knoweth. You hear that? He knoweth. Thy walking through this great wilderness, these forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee, thou hast lacked nothing. God's people have been in the wilderness, and yet He said they have lacked nothing. Do we know that even in the wilderness... God is with us? Do we really know that? Do we know that even in the wilderness we are lacking nothing? Or that, God, you don't know what I'm going through. God, you haven't seen my trials. Lord, you don't know how long I've been doing this or how hard my life is. You know what the Lord's response is to all of this? Really? I don't know. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what you're going through. I haven't seen it all. I, the Lord your God, knows, know what you are going through. I know how to deliver you from the bondage of sin, from the error of your way, from from all the bad, terrible, horrible decisions you've made in your life, I want you to know that I've seen it, I know it, and I can help you through the wilderness time period. In the wilderness places, I can help you. Because I know how to renew your mind. I know that my grace is sufficient. I know what it's like. Jesus knew what it was like. He's seen it all seeing you in the wilderness, and you know what? God provided this one small, narrow way that sees you through it. Do you know that? There's one small, scarce, narrow way that God sees you through it all, through this wilderness. Did Israel know that? Do God's people know that? Is anyone listening to this message who... Maybe you're not in a right relationship with God. Do you know that God knows how to see you through the wilderness of your life? Any of you who are wanting to understand God, do you know about it? Do you know about His grace? Do you know about the power that He gives? 
and that in the middle of the wilderness, God said two very important things that just jumps off the page. This is what He said. In the midst of the wilderness, I am with you. I am with you. And He also said, Thou lackest nothing. Nothing. I'm with you, and you're not lacking anything. He said it in the midst of the wilderness. Can you even believe it? How amazing that is from such an amazing God that He would boldly profess and speak these things to you. Why would He do that? Because they're true. Whether you believe it or not, they're true. God says, I know what it's like. I know I can help you. Israel, I can help you. God's people, I can help you. If you will just let me. So many are caught up in wondering how they got there. How did I get to this place? How did I get to this life? How did it become so complicated that, that I don't even know where to turn? Asking God, why am I here? They forget or don't even realize that God is still in the midst of it all. He's here. And He wants to show you the right direction. Where to go in the wilderness. Because this is exactly what happens to God's people. This is what happened to them. They kept taking their eyes off of God. Can you imagine? God sent Moses to deliver all these people from Pharaoh to get them out of the bondage of slavery, symbolic of the, of the bondage of sin. And God said, just follow me. Just follow him. Just go with him. Wherever he leads you. And all this time throughout the wilderness, God's people kept kept looking to other gods, warring and, uh, with all these nations, doing it the way God wouldn't want them to do it. So many times they did it that way. It's exactly what happened to them. It's the danger of what can happen to you and to others if we don't listen to God's counsel. God hasn't gone anywhere. He is still in our midst. If it's a wilderness or not, God is here. God is willing. God is ready to come and to guide and to lead and to give direction. Even when we feel alone, even when we feel the pressures of life, the strain of economic hardship, fear of the unknown, we could go on and on about all the things that sin does to us and to others. But God is saying, I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still here, still working, still desiring to find you, to speak to you, and to meet the greatest needs of your life. I'm here. I'm here. It wasn't just the fact that God's truth reminded me that we aren't lacking anything that spoke to me this week. It was also the fact that He said it and emphasized it in the time of being in great wilderness. You see that? We can all take this wonderful, stupendous truth all on its own, where God says, my grace is sufficient, you're not lacking anything, you lack nothing. We can be doing great, we're we're healthy, we feel good, strong, we like our job, everything's going well in life. And God says, you're lacking nothing. That's wonderful. But what about when God says it in the middle of a storm? What about when He says it when you're in the middle of your wilderness? You're lacking nothing. Wow. But Lord, listen, all this stuff is happening. All this stuff. No. You're not lacking anything. I'm still in the midst. I saw you in this great wilderness. I see where you're at. I see how long it's lasting and how long it's lasted. But here I am. The fact that he said it in the time of the great wilderness. When things appear to be at their worst, God is still here for you and for me. Isn't that amazing? When we don't know where to turn, we turn to Him. He is that refuge, that safety, that deliverer that we all need in our time of struggle and in our time of praise. He is still everything that we need. And I'll close with this, thinking about our great example of Jesus Christ. 
thinking about being in the wilderness. Wow. I don't know what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through. But listen, thinking of this idea of going in the wilderness or being in the wilderness, symbolically speaking, all these things happening all around us in my life. God, you don't know about it. He says, yes, I do. So I'm thinking of Jesus Christ. I can't think of a more lonely and trying time than Jesus experienced in the garden and in all those days that led up to his death until he finally, as the Bible says, gave up the ghost as he gave his life for your sins and mine. I can't imagine a more lonely place than that. When he went through those dark days, I ask you, where did he turn? Where did he go? Who did he turn to? And we know the answer, don't we? He said, Father, I give it all to you. Not my will, but yours, he died. And that is what God is telling us we must all do. And if we will, he guarantees, just like he did the Israelites, he guarantees them this truth. You're not lacking anything. You're not missing out on anything. You have everything you need. Why? Why? Because I'm with you. I'm within you. I'm that still, small voice that wants to be there with you to take your burdens away, to be the kind of God that you need. The only kind that really fulfills. That doesn't mean all of these earthly life problems go away. That's not what God is saying. God is saying, I will give you the one thing needful. I will give you the one thing you are truly lacking. And that is my presence in your life. So I ask you, is there something God didn't tell us? Something God didn't tell us? Is there? As we live this life, as we face trials of the wilderness, is there something that God forgot to let us know about? How to handle all of these things that we go through? Did God forget something? Is He missing something? Am, am I missing something? No. God didn't forget anything. He didn't forget to tell us anything. He gave us exactly the opposite. He told us everything we need to know. You must trust me. You must give your life to me. Now, always, forever, give your life to me. And I will give you the grace and the power to persevere by trusting Him. So I ask you, what are you lacking today? What are you lacking? And I hope you can stand there boldly and profess to God and to me and to anyone who will listen. I hope and pray you can boldly profess, I am lacking nothing. God didn't forget to tell me anything. He knows I'm in a wilderness, but He's there right beside me. He's within me, and He is leading me every step of the way. Is God doing that for you? And if He's not, I pray to God. And I pray that you would listen to Him tell you this is what you need. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this, this morning, this day, this blessed day. Father, for I believe that every day that we are here on this earth, we have opportunity to know You, to listen to You, speak to our hearts and to give us everything that we need, even as we go through what many may call wilderness times, struggles, burdens, unknowns. Lord, you are there to provide for us each and every time. And I thank you for that this morning. I thank you for all that you have shared with us. I thank you for speaking to my heart this great, wonderful truth that you do not leave us, Father, that you desire us and that you want us to trust you even in the hardest earthly physical circumstances, you, you are there for us. Father, that is so comforting that you give the peace that passes all understanding. Lord, go with us uh, this day. I pray it would be a restful day. And Father, I know many think we've had many restful days. But Father, today, may we set this day aside to contemplate and to think upon the things of you. Father, and to really let those things penetrate our spirit. 
and that we may make application in the way that you want us to. We love you. Thank you for this time together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.